Navigating what is safe and not safe in the cosmetics world can be a little tricky, a little confusing, and can sometimes feel like this. No scary chemicals! Don't get me! Don't get me scary chemicals! I'm going to get you! In reality, it doesn't have to be that scary. Buy some books, do some Google searches, read a couple articles, and usually you're gonna get enough information to make yourself feel confident about making a choice if you want that ingredient in your life or not. Let's do that with polysorbate. Now, to understand polysorbate, you have to understand that oil and water don't mix. You don't believe me? You think they could mix? They don't. Let me show you. Here we have some water. Here we have some oil. That's right, folks. Not mixing. Now, when oil and water were asked to comment on why they don't mix, why they can't just get along, both parties declined to comment. <gasps> ah. But, sometimes they do mix if they're forced to by an emulsifier. What is an emulsifier? An emulsifier holds the oil-based and water-based ingredients together, helping stabilize the interaction between both phases and thereby avoiding their separation in cosmetic formulation. Now, polysorbate, what is it exactly? Well, according to the CIR, it is polyethoxylated sorbiton, sorbitol ester of fatty acids, viscous liquid to waxy solid, range in color from yellow to tan, possesses a faint characteristic odor, and a warm, somewhat bitter taste. That leads us right into uses, cosmetics industry and food medication, anything where you need something to be mixed together like oil and water. Now, if you are familiar with reading ingredient labels, you may have seen polysorbate by several names, but polysorbate by any other name is, well, polysorbate. Specifically, where you're going to see the variation is in the number, polysorbate 20, 40, 60, 80. Those variations in number have to do with the molecular weight and how strong polysorbate is. Let's go to my ladies for a little bit more details on polysorbate and its variations. Polysorbate 20, an emulsifier, a solubilizer, a viscosity modifier, and stabilizer of essential oils in water. Now skip from 40, 60, 80 to 120. They all have their own definition. We're not gonna read them all, but we'll just skip ahead to polysorbate 120. A fragrance solubilizer and an emulsifier used in sunscreen preparations and moisturizing creams and lotions. So there you go. As the number gets bigger, it also gets stronger. Sad muscle. Look, I'm working on it hard to work out when you have kids. Now, how is polysorbate made? Because this is where our area of concern is going to come into play. Well, there's something called ethoxylated ingredients. What does that mean? They take a chemical, they expose it to ethylene oxide, and poof, ethoxylation occurs. I might be saying that wrong, but I know what it means. It means that the ingredients have underwent a chemical change. Now, what happens when that chemical, that, that sorbitol or that initial ingredient undergoes ethoxylization is a byproduct of that chemical reaction is dioxane 1,4. Now, enter the phrase, That's right. Up until this researching this topic, I understood the concept of being contaminated with dioxane 1,4, but I really didn't have the pieces of the puzzle about ethoxylation. So now what does that mean, right? Because I'm gonna bringing out some scary words because we know dioxane 1,4 is a bad guy. Not even like a kind of bad guy, not even like a fear-mongering bad guy, like a bad guy, like a known carcinogen, like a, the FDA doesn't want it in food and they discourage its use in cosmetics. Bad guy. 
Now, here's the thing about dioxane 1,4. So remember, anything that undergoes this ethoxylization process, uh, like polysorbate or phenooxyethanol, they are going to have that in there. So what happens is under a process of steam or vacuum stripping, they can remove about 90 to 99% of it. And that's pretty easy to do and it's fairly common that it is done because people know that they don't want dioxane in products. Like I said, it's a known carcinogen. It's a known bad guy. However, that last little percent is extremely costly to remove. So that means most times polysorbate and some of these other ingredients that undergo this uh, ethoxylization process are going to retain some portion of dioxane 1,4. Now, is it possible to buy it completely free of it? I don't know. I don't formulate products like that. I did go on Lotion Crafter and check out their polysorbate 20 and I did email them to ask, was there any dioxane in the product? This is what they gave me. This is pretty market standard for what's going to be in polysorbate or things like phenooxyethanol. Like I said, it's almost commonplace for them to remove about 90 to 99%. However, that last little bit does remain in there. Uh, so I felt a little bit led astray all these years about dioxane 1,4 and how I had missed the piece of the puzzle about ethoxylated ingredients. It's a little bit of a game changer for me. Uh, what should we think going forward? This video is not about fear mongering. It's just about talking about all the chemicals that we're constantly bombarded by and approaching it like you would almost a Weight Watchers system. It's a balancing act. Put a little something on this side of the scale, take a little something out of this. The thing about ethoxylated ingredients is they tend to be surfactants. It's a little bit of a bummer for me to find out because I love surfactants. And even more so because I know that probably in the dishwashing detergent I use, in the shampoo I use, in the clothes soap I use, all of those areas, I'm putting that back into the water stream. So that keeps me up more at night contributing to the water sources rather than necessarily what I'm putting on my skin. Here's how I look at it. And it, this all kind of came up because Trish from Sentive Trish and I were talking about uh, Earthwise Beauty and her addition of polysorbate into some of her products. Now, Ava has said that the polysorbate in her products is dioxane free. I would trust her. She's a very knowledgeable formulator. I don't think she would mess around with something like that. Um, but say you're just perusing the aisles at Whole Foods, how are you going to decide what products maybe it's okay for you in? Here's how I look at it. Polysorbate is a stabilizing agent, so it's not exactly necessary. Uh, phenooxyethanol is a preservative. You want your products preserved. I don't actually use a lot of products with phenooxyethanol in them, so using polysorbate in my night cream, that's fine with me. Uh, if I were to be using a lot of products with phenooxyethanol, maybe I would want to cut back on my polysorbates. You see what I mean? It's all a balancing act. Can you, can you cut everything out? I don't think so. Should you get that obsessive? Probably not. Does a lot go back to trusting the people who formulate your products? What do you guys think? Use any products with polysorbates? Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that to ingest them in food is far worse than putting them on your skin. So, uh, yeah, I definitely don't want to be eating any products with polysorbate, but in my skincare, in my lotion, probably okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.